In 2008, David Leet published a recipe in the New York Times that totally changed my life. That's kind of dramatic. It simplified my life because it ended my search for the perfect chocolate chip cookie. This, this cookie, cookie cannot be beat. It's chewy, it's crispy, it's rich, it's caramely, it's buttery, it's so good. So I'm super excited to share it with you in the first installment of Sweet Pea, where time in the kitchen gets a little bit sweeter. For this recipe, you'll need whole wheat pastry flour, white bread flour, baking soda, baking powder, coarse salt, room temperature butter, eggs, brown sugar, white sugar, chocolate, coconut, walnuts, and vanilla. You're going to want to cream your butter and sugars together. Anytime you're creaming butter, it's very important to have your butter at room temperature. It will not fluff up if you um, start out with cold butter or even cold eggs. You could have room temperature butter, but use cold eggs and you're going to be at a disadvantage. So start with a room temperature butter, your brown sugar, and the white sugar. And cream these two together for about four or five minutes till it gets really nice, light, and fluffy. Go ahead and scrape your mixer down. And add your eggs one at a time. Scrape the contents of your bowl down one more time. Now you can combine your dry ingredients, your flours and your leaveners, the coconut, and the walnuts. I leave my walnuts in pieces, um, in big pieces. If I buy halves, I'll just leave them whole. Um, I prefer it. I really like having a cookie where you don't have little fine walnut dust in it, but you actually get a chunk of walnut in every other few bites. Toss in a little vanilla, your chocolate pieces. If you're living in Europe, it's really hard to find chocolate chips, American style, so just get a chocolate bar and just chop it up into big chunks. Um, I actually prefer it because it looks more interesting. They're not so uniform. So stir in your chocolate for just a few seconds to get it integrated um, throughout your dough. So now your dough is ready for the fridge. So yeah. <laughs> now your dough is ready for the fridge. Here's the hard part, and this is what I didn't tell you about these cookies. You have to refrigerate this dough for 36 hours. And I'll tell you what, you can go ahead and make one or two cookies. I actually encourage you to make one or two cookies now. And then maybe in the morning make a cookie or the following day. And then after 36 hours, make a final cookie. You'll be so surprised at the transformation. What happens is the flour in the dough gets hydrated by the butter and all the sugar, and it starts to caramelize and age and just turns into this really amazing alchemy of deliciousness. That's all I can say. I don't know really what happens in the dough, but it is fantastic. 
So you can go ahead and bake off a few cookies if you just can't wait. And you get, a, you get to see firsthand the transformation after 36 hours. So I, do you want a cookie, Levy? Yeah. I'll be baking a couple cookies right now, but the rest of the dough, I'm gonna put it in the fridge for 36 hours, and I'll show you what I do after that. Now that your dough is chilled and had a chance to age, you can go ahead and measure out your cookies. Now your cookies are ready for the oven. I bake these at 340 degrees Fahrenheit, 170 degrees Celsius for between 16 to 18 or 20 minutes. It depends on the size of the balls. These are pretty small cookies, so I'm gonna start them out at 15 minutes and check them. And when they're done, they're nicely um, just toasty brown on the outside, but not too. I like mine just a little bit soft in the middle. Once the cookies have had a couple minutes to cool, you can transfer them to a wire cooling rack. Now you're ready to try the world's most delicious cookie. Um, nom, 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 oh, nom, 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 nom. Ah, bye-bye.